gracious uh, make a presentation prior to the meeting? Fine. Well, you know, I think, uh, is the television on now? I want to make sure the television on because this is very important. And I wonder if we could, uh, if we could uh, shut the door so we could have, uh, ask the new middle school principal to, uh, to shut the door up there. Christopher? Chris? Chris? I'd ask them to come in if they would, please, for a minute. Well, I, uh, frankly, I regard this as the one of the most important things I've done in the five years I've been on the school board, and I, I was hoping that uh, our visitors outside the door would come in and uh, at least hear what uh, what I have to say. Two of the members. Uh, of the school board are retiring, as everybody knows, uh, this month. This is their last meeting, and on July 1st, when we meet again, uh, they will be replaced by the two new school board members that were elected last month. I uh, am in the unique position of having served four years, my first four years in the board, with uh, four other people. We were all together. For uh, four years, there were no changes on the school board, and two of them left last fall, and the last two are leaving with this meeting. And I want to say something about both of them because, uh, aside from the normal cliches that uh, one routinely utters at times like this, uh, I really mean that it has been an extraordinary pleasure to serve with these two ladies. Uh, Fran Haywood and Priscilla Hare. And I'd like to say just a little bit about each of them. These are the kinds of things that people don't remember for a long time after you've said them. And I wish there was a way to have people remember it because I think it's very important. First, let me say a couple of words about Priscilla. They don't pay you for this job, but a lot of people take this job because of self-interest. Uh, school board is a very, very interesting uh, position in which to serve. Most people who serve on the school board have children in the public schools, and it's very important to them uh, to ensure that the schools are first rate. We have a society that is called the Me Too Society, this decade is not the decade of sacrifice. This decade is the decade of dog-eat-dog, -dog, of laissez-faire, of uh, looking out for oneself. But Priscilla Hare doesn't have any kids in this school district now. Uh, she could have left the school board after one term, uh, knowing that she wouldn't have any children uh, going to Cape Elizabeth schools. But she didn't. So she's not here uh, out of self-interest. Priscilla is, I think, uh, from that mold of person that existed in our country all along, and, uh, and I don't want to overstate it, but made it a great country but they, because they believed in social cooperation. They believed in making things better for everybody. And so she has come here month after month and meeting after meeting uh, with no personal agenda but with a desire to make the Cape Elizabeth schools better. Uh, just uh, 10 minutes ago, we were in a workshop session on foreign languages, and I thought, and Priscilla was speaking, and I thought to myself, as she said, that she hoped that younger children, K through third grade, would have an opportunity to learn foreign languages. She's not saying that because her kid is going to be in kindergarten or first or second or third grades next year. They're all beyond it. She's saying it because, for some reason, she truly wants Cape Elizabeth to have a first-rate school system, and she wants to make a contribution toward it. And Priscilla, I think you've made an extraordinary contribution.
contribution to the schools in this school district over the last six years. You really have. And as I said at the outset, people don't remember for a long time. School board members come and go, and I guess the question each of us has to answer for themselves is whether we, each one of us, make a difference. And for the most part, we have to answer that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, having served five years with you, you made a difference. And you can always know forever that you made a difference. I'd like to uh, present this plaque to you as uh, on behalf of the board and uh, the staff. And uh, it says the same thing that these plaques always say every year when somebody gets off. <laughs> It says, in appreciation of her exemplary service and leadership as a school board member, 1982-1988. And for the past couple of years, we've given out several of these, and they always say, in appreciation of her exemplary service. <laughs> Next year, maybe we'll have her with that day. for me has been working with my fellow board members, the administration, and working on so many committees that I really got to know so many of the faculty and found out how fortunate we are here in Cape Elizabeth to have so many bright, dedicated people working for the education of our children. And I thank you all for the opportunity of doing that. And I have another uh, plaque here that says, for her exemplary service. And it's going to go to Fran Hayward, our current chairman. Fran also has been an extraordinary person to work with. Uh, she and I, uh, more often than not, have been on the same side over these past five years. I have enormous respect for Fran's ideas, for her desire to bring about change in the school district. And most of all, I have, I have th th this strong feeling that no one that I have ever met ever stand, stood more rigidly, straight, and looked you in the eye to tell you what she believed. She was afraid of no one. She was not afraid of pressure. She was not afraid of uh, people in Cape Elizabeth disagreeing with her. She has been guided by only one thing, what she believed was right. She spent an enormous amount of time on school board matters. She always did her homework. She always did more than that. Fran was always on the phone to people she called all over the United States, getting people's views, finding out who the experts were. And then she would take a position, never, never fearful of taking a position. And Fran, despite so many of those three to two votes, I will tell you that more often than not, you were right, even when there were three to two votes. Fran Hayward is a person of, of integrity, great integrity a very great intelligence. And the people of Cape Elizabeth, uh, I think, are very, very fortunate to have somebody as smart as she is and as committed as she is serving them on the board. And finally, I think that I've never run into anybody, Fran, who has been so consistently a Democrat with a small d, so consistently believing that everybody, every single student in the school district should have a champion. And for the parents who may be watching on television who have hardworking children who are not straight A children, but kids who are trying and kids that all of us have hope for, you are losing their greatest champion. Fran Hayward was the champion of the underdog kid in this school district, and she's leaving, and we're all in her debt. Fran?
I thank you very much, Harold. That was a, a very moving and special. If nobody else remembers what you had to say, I will always remember it, and I thank you. Um, I also would like to do as Priscilla did and thank the citizens of this community for electing me. Uh, this has been really an honor to serve on the school board. It's been a lot of hard work and it's been uh, some difficult times and lots of fun times. Um, I hope we have done some valuable, important things to improve education. I think we have. And lastly, I would really like to encourage everybody who has an interest, and there are many, many people in this town who have great important interest in having a marvelous school system uh, to encourage you when a school board election comes up, give some real thought to running for a school board. It's, it's a marvelous way to have ordinary people, citizens of the community have an important common sense input into the education of the children in the community. It's, it's really been an honor and I do thank you very much. So now I guess we better get on with the business so we can finish this our very last meeting and it really has been a pleasure to serve with the, the members of the board. Um, we've, I think in Cape Elizabeth we always have marvelous school boards and I think we're really fortunate. So with that I would like to call the June meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board to order. Uh, Darrell, may we have the superintendent's report? Great. In keeping with uh, tradition of one year, uh, I've asked the principals to uh, give us a, an annual report now, I'm going to alert them that your annual reports are in the backup, and all of the board members have read them. So I would ask you to sort of highlight your accomplishments in the year, and uh, because we have a very, very lengthy week. Uh, let's start with the elementary school. Uh, the, our teaching principal is sitting on the left of the superintendent because he has volunteered to take Betty's place this evening. Only so I don't have to get up to the podium. That's right. <laughs> just right sit and there. talk. Right there. If I can keep track of all of this as well as Betty does, it will be a small miracle, but I'll try. Um, thank you, Daryl. I decided to go at our year-end report um, by looking back and addressing the goals and objectives we set for ourselves last fall. While they've been certainly at the top of my mind, I haven't wicked out the written report and reviewed it from week to week because they were very much ingrained in what we were about this year and they were very much prioritized in our school calendar as we met as a team monthly and decided which priorities we needed to be addressing at a given point in time. It was really a fairly elaborate scheme to be sure we got through all of this and, in, and indeed I'm proud to report that we've made the progress that I've hoped. Uh, you have a fairly detailed report, which I'll just simply remind those who are at home viewing what our goals were and the outcomes of those uh, proposed uh, directions. Our first goal we set for ourselves was to further develop the control leadership team structure and evaluate its effectiveness. Um, I wrote in your report that we'd done so formally last December and had uh, very positive feedback from the teachers. Uh, that we had met monthly, that we had a set agenda. Um, the hour a month proved to be a really full hour, and we already evaluated whether or not we can actually do our business in an hour a month, but we'll take a look at that further in the fall. We did the follow-up evaluation last week. Mrs. Swift uh, assisted us with pulling that together, and once again just got very uh, uniform reports back. But the teachers felt that despite the fact that there was uh, uh, three different people covering in the office uh, with my leadership and their very able assistance, they felt clearly that issues could follow through, that they had the leadership that they required and that um, the goals of the schools were being well met. So that was really confirming to us that this is a, a program that can work. As I said, Becky and Linda and I will spend time this summer looking at uh, the dividing of responsibility even a little clearer uh, to allow me more time to get into some classrooms. That was, that was difficult this year, to try to get done what I needed to do in the, in, before I went into the classroom um, was tough. And they are very able and ready to take on a few more roles so that I, my time can be better free for that purpose. Um, secondly, we wanted to establish a framework and timeline for further transition to the whole language curriculum. I don't feel a need to go into a lot of detail there. There was a very enormous report given back in November. Uh, the transition is occurring. You funded us for major curriculum work this summer in this area. And 
the transition, as, as Susan Welch presented at that time, is, is certainly well on its way. Our in-service was valuable this year. The work we've outlined for ourselves this summer is really uh, uh, taking on profound impact on where we'll be in the fall. Number three, to establish and implement procedures in support of the newly adopted retention acceleration policy. Uh, as I acknowledged in here, James Freundlich deserves a lot of credit for chairing that whole um, procedure. Uh, it was intense. It was lengthy. We had 11 referrals. The teachers involved will tell you that it was time-consuming and terribly worthwhile. We really were able to fully explore alternatives um, and to allow the parents to, tr to own a decision which they could well understand and which we could then support. And it's worked out very well for us, and I'm glad um, and, that, and that procedure will continue on uh, into the next year. The fourth was to conduct a study of former participants in the pre-kindergarten program so that we understand better the direction we wanted to go in that arena. Again, full report was given to this body in March um, that included our recommendations. Uh, as you know, uh, as a result of our kindergarten conferencing, the pre-kindergarten for next year was under-enrolled and has been canceled. So we will be having all heterogeneously placed kindergartens for next fall. The teachers are very excited. Um, there were only a couple of, I would say, four parents who chose uh, not to have their children attend our kindergarten for fall for their own personal reasons, which I accept. But we're very excited about this direction, and the staff has been um, a part of this process since November as we've sorted out philosophically the direction of our school and its, and its uh, very strong desire to be as flexible as possible within the needs of children. Five, to increase t teacher participation as gets to science curriculum. All of our teachers uh, did use either the physical or life science programs this year, uh, and that is an area that, that I would like to, as I told them at the faculty meeting last Friday morning, send them a questionnaire over the summer. I truly was not able to get that out this spring. Um, partially because many of them were still very much immersed in the program and had done it this spring. I'd like them to think about areas in terms of in-service support, and I have alerted Michael Ephraim that this is one area I really look for some uh, guidance from him in terms of, of uh, giving us more confidence in all areas of both life and physical. It's funny that most teachers seemed particularly comfortable with one or the other, and our goal is to make them equally comfortable with both. You supported a budget that will allow us to make acquisitions of more kits that will make this whole um, endeavor possible. Finally, to continue to keep the school's communication with parents a high priority, that will always be on my list of goals. I think it's incredibly important that we keep parents informed. Between the Pond Cove Parents Association newsletter, which many people contributed to, and the monthly newsletter that I tried to send out of our office with a, just a lot of details about what was going on in the school community, our parents were, were well informed of programs, of calendars, of, of opinions, and I, and I hope they found that worthwhile. They've got, uh, generally, two communications a month from our school that was descriptive of programs and events. Um, one outreach piece that we did this year that was, that was very successful um, and was sponsored by our Parents Association was our curriculum night, which we've talked about briefly here. And a little later on, I'd like to acknowledge, acknowledge the teachers who helped pull that together. I concluded the report with the fact that in addition to these major goals, we also took on a, uh, once again, a full school theme project, which we talked about last month in terms of structures giving Mary Jo Thompson credit for coordinating it, but all of the teachers credit for putting an enormous amount of effort into this particular theme project. We had a, um, an evaluation of our faculty meeting last Friday and are looking toward the notion of expanding a theme to be a full year theme so that the frantic pace we feel in trying to pull together something in two weeks um, can really transcend all areas over a period of a year and still have a cum uh, cumulative uh, uh, goal for some sort of fair in the spring for the children to celebrate. But we'll get back to you further as that progresses. We also spent a lot of time analyzing our space needs. And, and obviously the next thing in the superintendent's report is the status of the construction of the portables. And that has additionally taken time in terms of sorting out which programs need to be located there, what our exact needs were, what was going to be located in which building. And, and that's all still being sorted out in terms of office services to this day. Um, given all of that, um, 
within the body of this, I set forth what our goals will probably look like in the fall, um, and I'll be happy to speak to those then. I would very much like to, even though I was told to hurry up, take just a moment to acknowledge uh, the teachers who put in time above and beyond their classroom teaching this year to make all of this possible for a team-run building to work. The teachers must truly uh, be in a participative frame of mind and, and find ways to contribute that meet their strengths and their needs within their own personal lives, too. So as I said to the teachers, in addition to an excellent instruction in here, all of you have found areas where you can contribute to this school, and I'd really like to publicly acknowledge that for just three minutes if I could, because it represents hundreds of hours. The Language Arts Committee went, met practically every other week from the beginning of the school year. They, under the leadership of Susan Welch, our Language Arts Coordinator, sketched out all of our in-service projects, framed out the work for this summer, and generally monitored our full progress in the whole language area. And those people who gave time to that committee include Deborah Jordan, Lynn Evans, Nancy Rollis, Kelly Hassan, Liz Barton, Linda Nappy, Ted DeMille, Nadine Record, Becky Swift, Randy Martin, Sandy Burley, Bren Wilkinson, Susan Hobbs, and Julie Merrill. In addition, uh, Darlene Ayers called for a health committee to join her in terms of reviewing the growing healthy curriculum to plot further direction in health curriculum and to identify those resources we needed to acquire in order to pull the program off appropriately for next year. Helping her in that sense were Julie Gardner, Nadine Record, Becky Swift, Charlotte Holbrook, Julie Mullen, Mary Ellen Fegan, Susan Mackay, James Freinlich, and Teresa Cameron. We had a fairly intensive special ed program this year that was sponsored by some of our special ed parents, but working very hard with them were Teresa Cameron and also Wayne Dorr. Teachers who were willing to get up and speak at a morning presentation talking about mainstreaming special education children in their classrooms were um, Becky Swift, Kelly Hess, and Mary Ellen Keegan. And that takes a lot of guts to get up before your peers and really talk about in great detail um, the notion of mainstreaming children and the rewards and the pressures inherent in both. And I applauded them for that. We got off on a real good start with our Paw Prince Publishing. Uh, it, it got real entangled in terms of time demands, and the children's work will be published and distributed this summer. It's been an enormous job, and we really must reevaluate our, our resources and how we're able to put that publication together. But, but the assistance there in the first publication, again coordinated by Susan Welch, included Charlene um, Gleason, Lynn Evans, Nancy Rollis, and Liz Barton. The curriculum night presentation had a lot of people's brains, brain power involved. But those who actually got up and presented took on an awful lot uh, in terms of uh, their own integrity and in presenting what they truly believed in, and I'd like to recognize them. The language arts presentation was designed and presented by Lynn Evans, Ted DeMille, and Sue Welch. The math presentation by Kelly Hassan, Nadine Record, and Liz Barton. The science presentation by Ren Wilkinson, along with me. And Judy Page, Marie Hayes, and Tracy Greenwood spoke to the notion of Art, Music, and Media Center. One of the biggest jobs that goes on in uh, our school also is those who work on support teams for new teachers and for staff going through uh, the career ladder process. That is an enormous job, and it's a behind-the-scenes job. But, but the impact these people have on our new staff and their integration into our school is, is very significant. Serving as support team members this year have included Sue Welch, Linda Nappy, Deborah Jordan, Judy Page, Lynn Evans, Teresa Cameron, Mindy Martin, Susan Hobbs, Kelly Hassan, Dottie Davis, Claire Brosnan, Nadine Record, and Linda Nickerson. In addition, I have to tell you that we had a lot of teachers participate in the Models of Teaching course, the Coaching 1 and 2 courses, and the Writing 2 course along with First Aid. I mean, it makes me exhausted to think about everything that's happened this year. And the one point I would like to make to you is as I pulled these lists together, because I truly believe in publicly acknowledging these people's contributions, is that every single one of our full-time staff and one of our half-time staff members has contributed significantly outside of their own classroom, and I think that that deserves your recognition and why I took the time to bring it to your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Now let's hear a report from the middle school. I know that we have spoken already some of the board meetings about the accomplishments of the students, but I think some of it needs to, uh, bears repeating. I just want to mention that you are aware of the math counts 
uh, team that Eleanor Redmond had volunteered to coach for quite a period of time, and that was with seventh and eighth grade students. And uh, that effort of Eleanor's allowed our students to place first in the state competition. And uh, because of that, Eleanor, along with Peter Freilinger, were able to travel to Washington, D.C. to participate in the National Math Counts competition. And our team from Maine scored 16th out of the 54 teams that did participate. And I certainly want to make sure that Eleanor Redman is uh, commended for her efforts and her interest in taking on the 7th and 8th grade students. You also, one of the other board meetings, had mentioned the science fair. And I would like to thank both Diane Kessler and Polly Morrison for uh, coming into the school and asking that we uh, put on a science exhibit for our parents of the community, and that did go very well. That looks like something that may begin to uh, form an annual event at the time that the science projects are prepared by the students and ready for the Triple C competition, which took place this year in Freeport. We had five students traveling, and we had one of our students, uh, Kirsten Hornby, who did place first in the uh, biological division. So that was a competition with about nine other triple C schools. And uh, I think our students did well in that particular competition. You are also aware of the Knowledge Master that was in the paper a number of times in our team under the direction of Martin Watts, doing very well both times, both in the fall and also in the spring competition. You may not be aware, but uh, Barbara Connell had uh, administered, had our students take the national Spanish exam, level one. And of the students that we have in our Spanish class, and there were about 450 students that did take the exam in the state. Three of our students from the middle school were among the top 21 scorers, with Adam Buccalo ranking fourth and Elia Perez getting eighth and Leah Parker scoring 21st. And I would like to congratulate Barbara for an excellent job done with that Spanish class this year. We typically have annually, since 1979, been participating in the Spelling Bee. And this year, it, it's for six, grade six, seven, and eight. And this year, one of our students uh, in the seventh grade did represent the middle school at the Cumberland County Bee runoff. The students in fifth and sixth grade are given an opportunity to participate in the Yarmouth math meet, which occurs in December. And again, under the direction of Martin Watts, a group of students did travel to Yarmouth and competed with a number of other schools from the Portland area and even further north than Portland. At this time of the year, we acknowledge students in the seventh and eighth grade who have achieved some extraordinary academic accomplishments. Um, we do have the awards that are given to students throughout the year for their, their, for their athletic um, participation and achievements. But we did have five students in the eighth grade and also five students in the seventh grade this year that received high honors, which means that they have received nothing less than an A in every major subject that they take during the school year. And for some of these students, they're taking six to seven heavy subjects for, um, for class work. So again, five students in the seventh grade and five students in the eighth grade. And this has been something that we've been doing since 1979. The students are awarded a plaque in front of their um, peers. This year, both Anine Stanford and Andy Strout applied for participation in the USSR, USA Exchange of Physical Fitness Activities. And you, we do not know the results of that particular program. However, that will be published in the paper. All of our students, grades four through eight, did participate in that program. I think it's important to highlight that over 80%, and these are 80% of all students in the seventh and eighth grade, did participate in one or more of our inter interscholastic sports. I think that's extraordinary. I think back a few years ago, we were hitting around 60%. But to get that number up to 80%, and you're looking at nearly 205 students to 210 students in the seventh and eighth grade, uh, to look at 160 students participating in that interscholastic program is quite an achievement for the coaches in that program. In language arts, we had one student in the fifth grade who was a selected, whose poem was selected among a number of entries for the state student literary book, and she, uh, that was Tess Aldrich, and she's extraordinary um, in, the, in the language arts, and she has written some fabulous poems, but Gail Parker, her instructor, did submit that to the student literary um, panel, and that was selected. Integrated arts through Huey, Huey Coleman, and also through Mary Jo Thompson, we had uh, Marianne Casey's class win a first place finish in the category of preteen films for the work that they did during the integrated arts program. 
And Mr. Earl's class also was a finalist in the preteen film category. This year marked the first time that I can recall that our students were involved in a seventh and eighth grade play, a production put on, some musical drama that was put on by our, actually it wasn't a drama, it was called Teen, and it just spoke to the issues of, of the teen years. And under the direction of Sue Burdett, uh, a number of our seventh and eighth grade students did participate in that, and I, uh, I don't know if you were there at, this, at the show, if any of you were, I think you would agree with me that the students just put on a, a, a dazzling show, singing and dancing and just having a ball all evening. They also asked uh, that that be put on in front of the students, so we had a number of students that did come down at the end of, uh, well, it was Thursday last week, down to the high school to watch our seventh and eighth grade students put on that production again. And uh, the compliments, the raves, are, well, the, the reviews were terrific. In the area of our uh, computer instruction, I'd like to note that when the computer literacy requirements were established by the committee a year ago, we anticipated somewhere, our goal was to get 70% of our eighth grade students through the computer literacy exam. And we have achieved about 82%. Now some of our students in the eighth grade were not able to complete the requirements simply because of conflicts in their schedule. We have a number of other students in that uh, 12 to 13 students that did not complete the computer literacy requirement just because of their learning style and they just need a little slower paced program of and a little bit more time to work with computers. And we would expect that most of those students would finish up in the first half of the ninth grade year. So I would say that the computer literacy program is well on its way. In addition, Martin did introduce a few more requirements during the year and the students met those with no problem. So it looks like we're, uh, we're headed in just the right direction with the computer um, requirements. Also note that more of our students are using the computer lab from grades four right through grade eight. We have a couple of our programs in the eighth grade that are requiring the use of the word processor for completion of assignments. And that is basically through the writing literature program. But I would expect that in the years to come that will expand considerably through the rest of the curriculum. For staff development, a number of our teachers now have completed the junior grade books training. We started a program three years ago getting the teachers involved in junior grade books training. And we have, I think, all but two teachers now who teach reading or language arts, English, who have um, received junior grade books training. We have four more teachers this summer who will be taking the training up to CASCO. So and the, we have a number of uh, accomplishments in the area of the English and language arts and reading. As you know, we finished Quest this year, and we will have that in the grades six and seven. There will be some modification of that program in the eighth grade. And uh, already, Lyle and Julie have met with representatives from the State Department to see what type of program can be offered to eighth grade students that is appropriate for eighth grade students and, and uh, also responds to what eighth grade students are saying or some of their issues. We also feel that we will be putting in something uh, discussions about transition from eighth grade to ninth grade because we know for a number of students it's a very difficult time. So that is beginning to unfold and will unfold as the eighth grade year for our students gets underway in September. Through the efforts of, um, I guess, Barbara getting Rachel McAnil in here last September, actually it was a little later than that, November, a number of our teachers this coming year will be involved in an in-service program in the math residency of Rachel and also we have a science and service program that will be offered by Marie Sachs and that will be uh, starting this August. So we have a number of teachers that will be busy and hopefully uh, Michael will be involved in the curriculum work that these teachers will be doing in both the areas of math and science. Particularly the science will be grades four, five, and six but we do have our seventh and eighth grade teachers who will be somewhat involved with making sure they understand what is happening in, the, in those elementary grades as the students move up into grades seven and eight. I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts of the parent organization, especially through Loretta. Um, the parents organization has made outstanding um, contributions to the school this past year. I've, I've written a, sort of a litany of different uh, activities and sponsorships that the parent organization has been involved in, but I want to say tonight, Loretta, that thank you very much for all that you did. We had a couple very successful evenings with parents, more than just a couple, and some of the topics were listed here. We talked about the third grade transition to the fourth grade. We also talked about the health curriculum. We had a student survey that was done a year ago to this date that was presented again in the fall for parents to know a little bit more about how our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students are feeling about concerns and other issues. 
I would also like to congratulate Sarah Boxer and Eleanor Redmond for their work on the newsletter. Barbara was talking about communication, and the newsletter this year was our way and a parent's way of communicating with parents. And I think um, from the comments that I have heard and from the need to continue this in the future that it was a very successful enterprise for the first year, and I'm just hoping that there will be a couple people, parents out there, who again will continue to volunteer their efforts to make sure that that is uh, put together on a monthly basis and sent to the parents. should also know that the, there is a committee that was formed several months ago, um, and that committee is basically to develop a playground at the middle school. They are well underway. They've received outstanding contributions from the, from the, and this is money contributions from the community. I know there's also a great deal of support in terms of energy and excitement for what is going to happen at the playground area at the middle school. One highlight of the year for our student council was participation in a triple C gathering of student council members from all over the Cumberland County area. That was an event that took place at Bowdoin College. I had organized that and we brought a bunch of people, a group of people in from the State Department who made presentations on leadership to our student council members. And, that, and they also received a tour of the campus. And I thought that was one of the highlights for our students, just to get on campus and be able to mix with some of the college students, but also to uh, hear presentations from people in the state government who hold very important positions, talking about leadership. And finally, again, I would like to wish Priscilla and Fran the best. Um, it has been wonderful working with you on committees and through the board meetings. Uh, I wish you the very best. And uh, to Chris, as we begin to turn over the helm, I've met with Chris a couple times. I think you're very fortunate. I would predict that you'll, the middle school will continue on a very fine tradition. Um, I think you are, uh, Chris, uh, in the middle school. Well, the middle school is in very capable hands, uh, according to the times that I've already met with Chris. So, Chris, I'd like to wish you the best. And uh, I think you have an excellent staff over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Steve. And Steve, while you are right here, let me say on behalf of the board, we wish you very, very good fortune in your endeavors to come. It has been a pleasure working with you. We thank you for your fine leadership of the middle school over these low many years. Thank good you luck. Very much. Thank you. Our last report, I've asked uh, Rick Fusco to uh, highlight uh, Michael's report. In lieu of Michael's absence, I will uh, highlight the year for you. Please forgive me for reading most of this because obviously it's Michael's words, but he pretty much broke down the year in six categories, teacher evaluations, building management, substance abuse programming, pro programming on AIDS, athletic program, and high-tech curriculum. Under teacher evaluations, this year started with nine career ladder candidates needing evaluations. These included two continuing teachers and seven second-year teachers. Overall, 24 evaluations were completed this year, 13 evaluations for first-year teachers, seven evaluations for second-year teachers, and four evaluations for continuing teachers. One of the uh, major unexpected happenings of this year has been the turnover in faculty after the school year had, be had begun. And um, as of September, we had uh, new staff who came on board after the opening of school included Fred Jones in chemistry, Sue Burdett in music, Belinda Snell in guidance, Kerry Hall in English, and Kristen Tripp in physical education. So it was quite an impact to have five new people come on board once the school year had begun. Uh, under building management, uh, there's been much progress made in building management and building tone, uh, if I might say, say so myself. I'd like to thank the policy review committee which we established this year, uh, which included not only the members of the faculty, but we incorporated uh, or asked for input from uh, members of Parents Forum and also some student members uh, were on that, on, on that committee. Um, and this committee will continue this summer to look at agendas uh, concerning building management and, and will uh, continue into the fall. Uh, data was presented to the board after the first quarter that showed a dramatic cut, dramatic drop in cutting of classes. This drop was maintained for the entire school year uh, and we will continue that. Um, we have also ac accomplished much regarding supporting teachers in classroom discipline. Our new procedures for when a student is removed from class have worked very well and have allowed students to crack down on rudeness and disrespectfulness uh, and behavior. It has been a good year in that respect. Concerning substance abuse, the Cape Elizabeth community team had ha had a successful year. Its initial focus was on student programming. The community team helped sponsor a ninth grade 
retreat, the natural helpers program, and project graduation. The focus of the community team at the end of the year shifted toward the support of parents. Uh, thus, the community team is beginning work on parent peer groups in a safe home project. And Dr. Efron extends his appreciation and con congratulations to all of the members of the community team who helped throughout the year in both programming for students and the developing of support systems for the parents. Uh, this was our first year with a natural helpers program, and, and credit uh, to Andrea Kerr um, was is, is due. She was our school school's natural helper advisor, and she worked with nine natural helpers throughout excuse me, throughout the school year, and the program, too, uh, is off to a very, very good start. Uh, project graduation, for the first time, included activities for the entire night of graduation. Uh, congratulations to Katie Kenneboris and Liz Biggis and all the seniors who helped with this program, and especially to Don Richards and, and Debbie Rabin, who, Raymond, who helped facilitate the program. Um, we, we did go up to the uh, Merry Meeting Racket Club in, in Topsom, and of the 145 graduates, I think all but nine, uh, attended that, which was which was really great. We had a, a good time there. Um, lastly, uh, Dr. Effin extends his appreciation to day one, and in particular to day one staff who worked with us in helping with all of the programming, Michael Clifford and Elaine Goodrich. Under programming on AIDS, we achieved all the programming on AIDS that we initially set out to do. Training was provided to faculty, for parents, and for each of the four classes at the high school. And Dr. Effin again extends his thanks to all the faculty who helped facilitate student groups at each of the class presentations and to the community people who helped us measurably with this program. These people included Louise Thurber, Louise Tate, and Dr. Jeffrey Safer. Athletic programs, as Steve mentioned, in the middle school, a high rate of, of involvement by the uh, stu student body. Seventy percent of our students were involved in uh, interscholastic sports this year. Uh, we had an outstanding athletic year, and a lot of that, a lot of that is due to, to the job that Keith Weather Weatherby did as, as our new athletic director. He did a tremendous job. We have had five state championships this year. Those included cross country, soccer, basketball, tennis, and speech. Many of our other teams finished with Western Maine championships, and the majority of teams made the playoffs. Uh, under high tech curriculum, uh, a high tech and service program was completed by 10 faculty members uh, from the IT program, math, and science departments. Overall, this has been a very good year for the high school. Uh, the most moving moments of the year involved tragedy. Uh, Fred Hills' death in the school assembly for Fred is one of the most memorable events of Dr. Efron and all of our seven year, uh, his seven years at the high school and mine there, surely in three. In a year that the college admissions has been particularly difficult and competitive nationwide, our senior class did very well. Their, their success, despite the far more difficult college admissions scenes this year, is a final statement for the high school's year. It demonstrates the basic strength of the educational program in Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask him a question? Sure. sure. It's not the most important thing you talked about. I, I'm just curious, and I don't know when else to ask you the question. Why do all the kids, you know, graduation nights are rough nights, and not our, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be our kids that are the problem. There's a lot of people on the highway at 4 o'clock in the morning, at 3 o'clock in the morning. How come we get 145 kids to drive 35 miles in the middle of the night and back, rather than somewhere around here? We took school buses, Harold. I understand, but... Yeah. So it's, a, it's a long trip. We had school bus accidents. We had people out there. See, it's not necessarily... One of the things, Harold, I think is, is the availability of, of facilities such as the one we went to, which had racquetball courts, uh, basketball, a swimming pool available to the kids. Uh, dance, they had a disc jockey there. And if there aren't that many, a lot of the facilities were, were used up, like tennis in Maine and, and, and off, out of Congress. Personally, I think it was good to be away from the scene, which avoided... Uh, curious uh, students from other schools in the area, as likewise underclassmen. It kind of avoided that uh, inquisitiveness and in driving to see what's happened. I, and uh, okay, so for that for that purpose, I thought it was well worth Rational well worth it. Okay. Um, excuse me, Priscilla, did you? Yes, it's been my observation over the years of project graduation. It seems like. If you live in the western part of the state, then you come to the coast and take an all-night cruise on a ship. Or if you live in the northern part of the state, then you come down the southern part. Nobody ever seems to stay in their own home territory. The, 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 the grass is always greener. I do share your concern, though, about the school buses. Are our school buses all up to date in the, the fuel tanks that you know that that was it, uh, that caused the problem? Uh, so they're inspected periodically. Yeah, I mean. They, they, they have been state inspected. Well, they may be state inspected, but I think her question is, there was a problem in Tennessee, and the school bus 
I caught fire and it was probably inspected by the state of Tennessee and I think the issue is are they more than seven years old do we have buses that are more than seven years old yes we do but uh, we had a recall I think on a few of them and I think it's gone through a process or something mm -hmm. you know, the guidelines have been met you're sure you're sure mm -hmm. I've been asked that that's a good question mm -hmm. Yeah. For two years, we've attempted to establish a structure to, to measure some kind of growth. Now, this is the second year. Now, if you leave these three reports, I would re recommend to the board that you make this part of the minutes so that from year to year, we could look at the accomplishments of the administrative staff. That's the purpose of an accountability system. And I think in two years, we we've started something that you can look back on. Uh, so I uh, can't make a uh, motion, but I would recommend that this be, these reports be part of the minutes. Well, Darrell, I agree with you, and I particularly agree uh, with the concept of utilizing these reports to recognize students and faculty members who have contributed so much to the success of the year. But I also think then you have to we'll do that but I hope that there will be another process where we can have a good discussion about, some, you know, year, year in perspective, looking back retrospectively at the year and saying to the school board, you know, this was a problem. We don't have an answer for it. We were working on it. We would like you all to give some thought to it. Or something else was, uh, we're doing better at it, but not good enough. I think that would be helpful to the school board too. This is kind. Of, this is great. This is recognition night. But we need. A, I think we also need, in addition to that, a real evaluation of where our strengths and our weaknesses are. We must have some weaknesses. I would hope that that would be part of the workshop for the goal setting in the summer. In other words, we hope we've been late each year to set our goals only because we've all been new. Now, if we have a workshop in July to review the accomplishments, where we see some real weaknesses, then we establish new goals, and in September we start right out with a whole list of new goals, and we work on those. So I agree. I think we're on the same wavelength. And I would hope that we'd have two workshops this summer in our convenience, one for an evaluation and one for setting the goals for the following year. I do that internally with the administrators then it'd be nice that I could share the board goals with them so we would have some of the same concepts. Uh, Darrell, I, I don't see that you need a motion to include these reports. Um, I would request that you do re include the end of year reports from each of the principals and the minutes on an annual basis. Thank you. Uh, an update on our portable to the elementary school. I would like to uh, extend our deep appreciation for the Planning board, the zoning board, for holding special meetings to get us through uh, so that we could start on Wednesday the portables at the elementary level, uh, where that is in good order. Uh, C, a report on the track storage building. I think it was a consensus that we put a stop on the track storage building. I have uh, spoken today with the town manager. I would like to go to the new board in July and ask that we consider seriously uh, that building with bleachers as part of the overall building program that will be discussed through the year and it seems feasible that we leave that hole there for a short period of time until uh, we know what kind of direction we may be taking. Mm -hmm. The uh, report on the length of the school day is included in your report. It's extremely complicated. <coughs> we are going to extend the school day, and it means different things on different levels. And it would take me more than an hour to go through the intricacies. But for the most part, I will say this. Uh, it will allow us to have foreign languages, in the middle school, it will also help solve the band lunch program in the middle school. Equally as important, it will solve the laboratory 
problem we had at the high school and add several other dimensions. I would suggest that in six months after this is started, that the superintendent report uh, just exactly the benefits, uh, how we're using the extended time, and whether or not we should make some changes. Because I'd like to look at this as a pilot at this point as to how the time is used. And then we would make a full report to you, you know, to every six months until all of the staff members decide this is the best way to use the allotted time. I think there are several, at least one board member that would like to comment on the plans that we have, uh, and this would be a good opportunity to do that. Right. Me? Yeah. How did you know I wanted to comment? I felt the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, yes. I am. Uh, I have to be uh, candid. After all, if a Fran is leaving the board, then I'll have to be more candid <laughs> and, uh, and and confront the issues. Uh, I'm unimpressed with these reports on how the extra time will you will will be used. Uh, dissatisfied, I suppose, is better better word. Yeah, I don't know what we do with it, about it, but uh, I certainly don't want to look back at the end of a year or have some, somebody come to me at the end of next year and say, hey, I understand that that half hour that you've added to the school day is being used in the following manner. And quote to me what's in these reports because, frankly, I can't defend it. And I would have to say to that person, you're absolutely right. So I would hope that in the next, I understand this is some political problems here too. I mean that this, this is arrived at through a democratic process, how this time is to be used. Uh, but there's a lot of citizens out here uh, in this community who are interested in the schools and a lot of parents and I suspect that they there, there wouldn't be a groundswell of support for how these memoranda describe the time uh, use of the extra half hour. So, so I, I think you ought to spend some time over the next two weeks or three weeks uh, doing some more talking about this. If if you're telling me that this is going to uh, make a difference a measurable difference in in education in Cape Elizabeth, uh, I don't get a warm feeling. Well, any particular level that you feel well, more enthusiastic about than any other? Well, let, let, let me just, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the middle school now, okay? Uh, overall, uh, the middle school faculty has reviewed how best to use the instructional time. The recommendation is to develop a nine period day schedule, one period more, so it will result in an extra period in the middle school. And this period would be used for tutorial assistance, sustained silent reading, guided study, and instrumental choral instruction. Now, in order to have, then it goes on in the next general paragraph is, in order to develop the additional period for chorus and band, you're going to have to cut back, you're actually going to cut back the time spent on English and math and other basic subjects. One minute. One minute. Yeah, exactly, one minute. But we, there are parents out there that actually think that kids are going to be getting more English and math. And so this proposal of adding one half hour to the school day will, as currently conceived, result in less time in math and science and English. Now, I personally, and I may be, uh, you know, minority one here, I find that undesirable and, uh, and bothersome. Uh, and, and, and it's nothing against band and chorus. I, I want you to know that I'm a former 
uh, member of the Cape Elizabeth Junior High Band, that I'm f former president of the Portland Symphony Orchestra and currently chairman of the advisory board. I'm vice chairman of the American Symphony Orchestra League. I like music, I like serious music, and I'm all for it. But you can't sell me a program that results in, I don't care if it's 30 seconds less time, in math, science, and uh, uh, English. Uh, let me just state one thing in defense of the staff. This is a far more complicated than it appears. For example, if you take seven departments on the high school level, all have differing needs, the, the lab problem alone. You solve one and you create another. On the <coughs> middle school level, you will note that the variance from the fourth and fifth grade is going to be different than the sixth grade and the seventh and eighth grade. And you have to schedule really two schools there. That's why we're losing that minute. So he's able to do that. On the elementary level, it's a little simpler. However, just to show you how complicated it is, there will be some teachers teaching less time as we offer French because our teachers don't teach French. So it, it, it's very difficult to use all of that 30 minutes the same way across the board. Hopefully, I'll be able to report that where we're using it on every level is beneficial to the student. And if it has to give up one minute to solve a problem, that's a real big problem. One, whether a child would take recess, lunch, or an instrumental, I can tell you the numbers after we try this. Uh, I'll also say this. The entire staff has been very, very politically involved in all of this. No doubt about it. This, That's why I started know, off my statement by acknowledging the that. The easiest thing for the staff to do would have been just put the minutes on a period and not solve our problem. So I think they're making a real attempt to use this 30 minutes the best possible way they can. And I'll tell you quite honestly, if it isn't going to be better, I'll tell you where it isn't better. And if it's better, I'll show you where it's better. I suspect that the staff over a period of six months will come up with some plans that make a lot of sense to the schools and even the departments. Harold, I think we've got to give them a little time. I mean, basically, I, I agree with you. I think they're going to. I think I think there may be mistakes made, and I think they've got to have some time to work through mistakes. And I think our coming in and saying this may be a little premature. I mean, maybe in January we can say, you know, how's it working? We don't like the way it's working. Well, I... I, I, I the high school, I'm real pleased with the high school. Yeah. I mean, and, and that is, I'm not even sure they're going to be able to implement it, but I think it really answers a lot of important needs. Uh, you, you know... And uh, I don't know about... I, I, I'm I, not I, disagreeing with you. Uh, you. What you say is... Is, is sensible. I'm just saying that I have to react to what I read. Right. If I don't, in, in my years around here, I have found that silence is acquiescence, and acquiescence is approval. And uh, I don't agree with it. And so I have to tell the superintendent, so at least he knows, that if I do raise an issue about this six months from now, he won't say, well, why didn't why did you, you say, say something it? before? And so I'm saying to him right now, I'm, look I, right. It, I'm not satisfied, but uh, I'm just one vote, and all you need is three. And I, we're not voting on it now, but I'm just saying down the road, I'll keep asking these questions, and I'll keep looking at it, and I'll keep talking to people about it, and I may some, say something more in midstream, and I hope no one will say now's not the time to complain. I think we'll all have more to say, but I, I, at this point in time, I, I really don't think they'll be spending 30 minutes in sustained reading. I would rather them be spending 30 minutes in sustained reading rather than going home 30 minutes early. So to me, that's already an improvement. But I have a feeling that the needs of the school day are going to start filling up that time. And what we hear in six months may be very different than what we're reading on this paper. Yeah, I, I, again, what you say is uh, is not without merit, certainly. Uh, but and I just I'm not trying to start trouble here. I'm only trying to state my opinion so the superintendent knows what my opinion is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hear there are the... loud and clear. This has not been put to bed. 
Are there other and, uh, comments? I would just hope that in six months we could really indicate that it's been very, very worthwhile and where it's been worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jan? Yes. The parents that have spoken to me about the extended day have all expressed the desire that academics be increased um, for the use of that time. I, I think that sometimes what happens is that, you know, the, the, the teachers decide um, to use it in, in the manner that they are, and it's probably going to be a wonderful way to use it, but somehow the message doesn't get home to the parents why they feel that this is important for the children and, and why the time should be used this way as opposed to increasing math, science, and English by one minute. And I think it would be helpful if, if somehow that communication gap were bridged and parents could understand why the teachers felt that this was the important way to use that extra time and that we would reevaluate, you know, after a, a span of time has gone by. I think we can report this in our uh, correspondence to the parents as we search for what we really want to do. But you've got to, well, you've got to remember, we don't only have three buildings. We have 13 levels that have differing needs. And we're going to need a little time to work it out as best we can. I think the teachers try very hard to keep what's best for the kids in mind and work towards those goals, you know, in, really well. I, I think that, that the parents also are trying to, to struggle with that and, and know what they want for their kids. And somehow, we're all working toward the same end, and we've got to make it clear that that's what's happening. And, and so I'd like that's to see more communication. communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have further comments about the length of the school day uses as described in the memoranda that we've seen? No, I have a short comment, actually a couple of short comments. Um, in the high school, I, I'm very, very pleased that the double labs will be, double period labs will be able to be offered. I think that that just makes a huge amount of difference in conducting really good lab experiments. Uh, one thing that I felt uh, really concerned with uh, in the description, courses that do not choose a regular 70-minute period per week may develop programming that requires a 70-minute period periodically as the curriculum demands. I hope that by not having a significant number or at least some courses that don't choose to use that double period, I hope that doesn't mean the students get a double lunch. No. Because I, I wasn't too clear no. in this description what else would happen no. with that other 30 minutes. There, there are going to be teachers assigned for tutoring. Some class activities could go on. Clubs and associations, right. I understood right. that, but I, I, I thought if a student were not involved no, in a club, no extra lunch. or a teacher were not well, available for tutoring. Lunch, but it didn't have anything to do with eating longer periods. Okay, well, I hope that it would not ever include that, because to me that really would be a waste of time. Um, and I guess I have some concerns in the middle school that it just seems to me that there that the extra time for too many students would be would mean an extra study hall. I hope that, I think that it would be good to start out by saying this is what we think is a really important components to middle school education. And if we feel that music activity, either in the form of chorus or um, separate or group music, you know, instrumental instruction is really an important component of middle school exposure and instruction, then I think we should work toward having all students able to participate rather than have a dozen students taking instrumental and you know most of the rest having an extra study hall. I hope it doesn't work out that way. I don't think it would be beneficial. I agree with Loretta that we need time to let everybody uh, really work toward making the best use of this time, but I also agree with Harold in saying I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement in the plans that we have, and I, I hope that improvement will take place. Can I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. uh, last month, when a presentation was made by one of the teachers, the statement was made that, according to the survey of the town, the parents, the citizens of the town, were opposed to an additional school day. Now, that, that was from this this uh, survey that we made a year, a year and a half ago, and I made that survey, 
and it, it didn't ring true. I didn't have my facts in front of me, so I didn't feel like I could refute that statement because I really couldn't come up with the figures. But I checked the book, and, and the parents were, the citizens of the town were in favor of an additional longer school day. And um, there were some people who said, I think 80 people said, I don't know is the answer. Uh, but the majority of the people were in favor of a lengthened school day, and I, I wanted the public to know that that had been uh, the consensus of the town and that uh, there was some misinformation given, I'm sure, inadvertently. Wait, because if we got a letter here. Where's the letter from you? Well, I, see, I'm sure that person heard yeah, that. We got a letter here from a citizen, a couple who said that they were, uh, no, 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 no. That, that they were opposed to the uh, longer school day, and they wanted to know why the school board wasn't listening to the citizens on this, since the citizens it's were right, so right fervently opposed to a longer school day. You say, knowing that a majority of Cape parents voted against this, now, you're telling us that the survey relied upon as the basis for the assertion that the, that the people in the town are against the long school day is just wrong. The, the survey says just the, the opposite. The teachers were overwhelmingly uh, opposed to a longer school day when they were questioned on that, but the town citizens were in favor. Okay, so um, uh, you're right. You know, well, I just, I just felt like people should think or should know that it was not something that we we voted on against the wishes of the town. It was the consensus. Okay, now one other question that, that I have, and this is important because surveys are, are surveys, or the survey says that the majority are favoring a longer school day, but you uh, and Jan, when you campaigned uh, for office last fall, went to a lot of coffees and teas and so forth and met with a lot of citizens. Did this issue come up at all about a longer school day? Yes, it did. Did it come up frequently? Yes, it did. Okay. What was your sense? Were they, did you sense that people were, up, uh, uh, when they no, raised they, it, they were opposed no, to a longer school day? No, they were in favor of it, and that's why that was one of the reasons I cast my vote, in favor of it. What about the people that you met with, Jim? Were they opposed or in favor of a longer school day? In favor. I. I Everyone that I spoke with was definitely in favor of uh, a longer school day. All right. Loretta, thank you for clarifying that information. Darrell, yes. I think we're through with commenting on the length of the school day reports. Okay, fine. Just quick report on class size. We've had some changes on class size. On your elementary, please change your first grade 116 to 20. I think overall, I would say that if history repeats itself with class size, uh, we will be about where we are this year or a little higher uh, per pupil uh, on the elementary level. On the middle school level, it appears to me that we're about where we were or a little better and uh, the Spanish uh, really sticks out here uh, is uh, something we will watch very carefully. The high school is just beginning to do the ninth grade. Generally what the superintendent does is I meet in September with the principal to look at all classes that are below 10. And there we make a decision as to changing people within the schedule or whether or not we should offer the course. For example, if you promise somebody French 5 and you end up with 9, you probably would make the decision to go with the course. But those are reviewed after they're all scheduled. And the number of changes that are made through the summer are, and the assistant is here to, to help me with this, astronomical. The changes that kids make on that schedule. So it doesn't make a great deal of sense to look at high school ranges until September. The other two are pretty, uh, we can pretty much measure what those would be. Does anybody have comments on the class size report that we received? Fourth grade is really creeping up there. Uh, I have one, uh, oh, one question. We have uh, in eighth grade, 26 kids opting for French and five for Spanish. We offer guidance to these kids in that respect. I mean, how? Why is it that, uh, that why, that's... Why do we have so few in Spanish? So few in Spanish and so many in French. 
other than other than the you know uh, the fact that you know French is kind of traditional here versus you know in the south. I don't know, Steve. Can you help us with that? The Spanish don't know. Yeah. We were at uh, eight last year. We had uh, registrations for Spanish, and they were low last year. Um, I can't. I have no explanation as to why those numbers are as low as they are. The only thing that we're going to try to do is to walk into the French class. We don't have all the registrations in yet. We still have about seven more to go. I don't think we're going to pick up the seven students. <laughs> in the Spanish, but we will start the school year. Uh, it's my recommendation that we start the school year. We go to the French class and we sort of let the kids know that the numbers in the Spanish class are low. And that if you're looking for a better educational environment, go home and talk to your mom and dad and see if you wouldn't want to take Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know, the numbers can come up a little bit and bring those French down. Yeah. Maybe some students that are just sort of like going <coughs> away. And all they need to know is that there's a better opportunity in the Spanish mm -hmm. class than they're sitting in the yeah. French class. That's what struck me as the father of a kid going into eighth grade. Well, what an opportunity. Yeah. Oh, almost tutor. Yeah. I, I would comment that I have some trouble ha supporting a class of four or five students in a first year language course. It would seem to me that uh, at that point it's somewhat optional with many of the students. And I just have to say I think that a public school uh, there's some difficulty in my mind supporting a class of four or five students when other children are in classes of uh, 22, 24 for basic subjects as English, math, science, and all of that. W one other comment that I'd like to make about this, uh, we have a class size policy which gives us uh, recommendations for class size. and. Uh, I don't know what the history is, Steve, in the middle school of students coming in or departing over the summer, but we're starting in grade four with 23 and four, and if we gain students during the summer, we're going to be well above the recommended class policy size, or policy of class size, of 22. And certainly in the seventh, that's in the fourth grade, and in the seventh grade, we're really in worse shape. We, we have a policy that states we should have classes of 22, and we have classes of 24, 25 before the summertime. I have to say in relation to, I know in the past we have been, we always expect elementary enrollments to increase during the summer. That has happened in some instances and in other instances it has not happened and we've had classes of extremely small sizes in some of our elementary classes. I'm wondering if we have enough flexibility to address the problem as in the fourth, fifth grade or the seventh, eighth grade rather than have uh, 15 and 16 students in the first or second grade when we have 25 and 6 in the eighth grade. That seems to me really uh, some difficulty there. I don't know what our history is and why are we not feeling that we should at least uh, tentatively address class sizes of 25 at this point if it might be up to 27 or 28 by the time September rolls around. We, we could very well pick up that type of number in the fourth grade. Usually that's what happens. In the lower grades, we pick up students over the summertime. The, the numbers I've given you right now are based on all those new students that we know are coming into Cape Elizabeth that won't arrive until September. Now that's typically not what happens. Usually we get those enrollments in August. But we've got more parents now coming in earlier saying that we'll be moving to Cape Elizabeth and we'd like to get our child registered. We've never experienced that before, so there may be a balancing that occurs at that mm -hmm. at this point. And we may find only one or two students coming um, in each one of the grades. We've had as high as 11 in each one of the grades before coming during the summer. Mm -hmm. I, I we know. We've also had some students leave. Um, you know, the, the dilemma that you face is there is no more room in the middle school unless you put up some more walls in some of the classrooms and reduce the size. It just, there's no place to put them. So what you have to do is to, you know, look to maybe swing a couple fourth grade classes over to the Pond Go to School. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's if you're looking at, at other classes. Well, I think what we have to do is to watch the enrollments every every day on both schools. Mm -hmm. And to see, uh, you know, if we get major changes in the elementary and major changes in the opposite direction on the on the middle school level, well, mm -hmm. we will certainly have to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things that we're able to do is we're all here. But the principals are on the job July 1, uh, so we can watch these enrollments, and Barbara's here this summer, so we can watch these enrollments mm -hmm. by the week. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, come to you if we, we see something, as you say, 
That, that, that's a problem. I mean, I think it's a real problem to have 26, 7 students in fourth grade. Um, the fifth and sixth grade looks pretty good. And grade 7, if we have 28, 30 students in a class, I think that's really unacceptable in this town. I agree. And I think we, we would come to you in a minute and show you where we make yeah. adjustments. Well, then the new board will look for basically a monthly report, it would seem anyway. to me, on class sizes so we don't have a, a major surprise come September 8th board meeting or whatever, the beginning of school after school starts and the room is filled with parents whose children are in a class of 32. That's happened to us before, so. <laughs> and I can tell you it's no fun. But I do think it's really important to, to get a real handle on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last uh, superintendent report is the uh, report on uh, fourth grade assessment and Lyle is here to make that for us. I've been through this quite a few times before, and most of you are familiar with the format that we've been using for the past two or three times in presenting the main assessment test scores, so unless you have any objection, I'll use the same format tonight as I go through the uh, report that you folks all have copies of. I'll project the uh, charts on the wall there for the audience. Um, feel free, as I go through the report, to ask any questions as I go along. The first chart that's presented to us by the state is really a breakdown of who has been tested and how many students have been excluded from the testing report. If you recall, when I reported on the eighth grade earlier this year, I had mentioned that 100% of our kids took the test and were included in the report and that this fall, or that uh, this spring, the uh, results will be somewhat different and my projection came true. We had four students which, because we have approximately 100 students in the uh, fourth grade, who were excluded uh, because of a handicapping condition, that's about twice the uh, number for the state, twice the percentage. And also, if you look down at the number of handicapped students in the report, statewide, there's an average of 6% excluded. We had 15% excluded, which is approximately two and a half times the state average. So we have a very significant number of students who were tested and who were in, in a handicapping program or a program that services handicapped students of one kind or another. Um, in the report, 15 of our students were in, are in the report even though they are receiving special services. 82 students are in the uh, mainstream without services and are included for a total of 97 students of our 102. There was one other student that was excluded because of a situation where the student moved into the school system out a month before the tests were given, came from an unapproved, unaccredited school, and really was a non-reader. He could not read the test, so it didn't make much sense to administer the test. Uh, essentially, that's the major reason why the other four students in the uh, special services program were excluded is because they could not read the test well enough to uh, take the test as other students were. What I'd like to do next is skip to page seven. That is really skipping over your next chart. I suggest looking at this page next because this gives the overall results. If you look at the numbers in bold print in each one of the headings, the um, scores for the past three years of our fourth grades are included. For instance, in the area of reading, three years ago, our 
students scored at 375 uh, two years ago, 370, and this past year, the score was 340. Is that a trend? If I hope not. If you were, well, you're a statistics uh, uh, person now. If you plotted that, would it tell you anything? It's a trend that's going in one direction that I'm sure will soon reverse itself. Um, if you look to the right, you will see that the diamonds there represent the past three years. So we've gone from a high of 375 three years ago to a 340 this year. The little rectangle under the three diamonds represent the cumulative score for the three years. If you go down to writing, you notice a similar kind of trend. Only the greatest amount of decline in all the subtests were in the area of writing. If you go down to mathematics, you will notice it goes 375, 355, 320. That's the uh, same trend you were talking about, Harold. Okay. Then when you get down into the three subject matter areas, uh, science, social studies, and humanities, uh, the three years are extremely consistent. Why do you think there's that discrepancy? this year? Why would science, social studies, and humanities remain strong where the other three would, would be so much weaker? Why it's down in three and not the other three, I really don't know. I can't, I really can't address that. Could it have anything to do with the fact that everyone studies science, social studies, and humanities? They all have the, the, the same experience? The experience is really a probably more for, I mean, for students across the state. If you're looking at students... No, I'm talking about in just our district, just in our, our local school system. I mean, everybody has science together, everybody has social studies together, everybody, you know, goes to music and art together. But in reading and math, there's probably more differentiation. And those seem to be wider. Would, would that have any... I don't know. I doubt it. Actually... My concern is, if you look at the science, social studies, and the humanities, they are somewhat below the high points of our first three subject areas. Actually, there. science is higher this year than it was last year. That's right. Humanities is the same. I science, just thought it was is just science higher than it was last year? I thought it was the same. No, it's 325 this year, and it was 325 last year. Higher by five year. points. Three what? Five points. It says 87, 88, which is this year, 325. Right. Oh, yeah, it is higher by five, yeah. It just seemed that it was interesting that there was that inconsistency. And I would think across the board it would be fairly similar. If, if I, think, I think Loretta's right, if, if uh, the low scores in reading and writing can be accounted for by the group of people that took the test, then you would also see the results in science and, uh, well, you'd see the results in science and you don't. So that would tend, if you look at science, you would tend to discard the theory that the low scores in the other subjects were resulted from, uh, you know, the universe of people who took the tests here in Cape Elizabeth their characteristics. However, Lyle, five points is, has no significance on this test at all. No. No, so there's no significant difference. Five points is no significance. Exactly. exactly. High school level, <coughs> five, 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 five. Yeah, but, but that's the point, there. But why would you have five percent at one and fifty percent at yeah. another with the same group of kids taking the same? You can't account for it, and you can't say that there's a huge drop in writing, for instance, or reading because we had more special services kids taking it this year relative to the number of special aid kids taking it statewide when in fact it didn't that didn't account for any difference in science and really no significant difference in social studies and far less difference in humanities certainly than the reading the writing particularly the math 
That is, what, what would your response be to that, Lyle? That is there some sh shred of possibility there in your view? I think that we need to study this a whole lot more. Uh -huh. uh, these results just came in as the school was winding down. I'm presenting them to you as, as uh, I see them. Um, I think that what we need to do, and I mentioned it in my memo, I think that Wayne Doerr and myself and the administrative team needs to uh, take a look at some of the past test results for this particular grade level, take a look at as much data as we can and, and try to arrive at some some conclusions as to why we see this particular pattern and ask ourselves, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with some answers, is this pattern similar or different than what it has been during other years? Mm. Um, well, this will certainly stop us from congratulating ourselves so much as we have in the past that we'll, 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 uh, we'll tend to be a little bit more restrained the next time we get some good statewide scores here. That's right. It will be, be a little less self-congratulations. Now, if you would like to... We'll say, oh, you can't pay too much attention to those scores. Yeah. I haven't heard that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, now let's flip back to page five. Page five, if you were confused a little bit by page seven, page five might be a little bit more confusing because this is where the uh, state is divided up into quarters. First quarter there would be from like the first to the 25th percentile, second quarter would be the 25th to the 50th percentile, the third quarter would be like 50 to 75th percentile, and obviously the highest quarter would be the 75th to the 99th percentile. You can see that the clusters differ in terms of the percentage of our students who fall into those, and even differ in comparison to past years. For instance, um, there are quite a few less students falling in the third quarter and the fourth quarter this year compared to last year, and conversely, the lower two quarters are up. If you look at the writing, for instance, the first quartile stays pretty stable. It declines a few, num few numbers, but then you, if you look at the third quarter, you'll notice it goes from 33 last year to 14 this year, who are in that third quartile. And probably the most curious change is in the lowest quartile, where it jumps from seven students to 22. See, that's very different than when you look up at the next column of reading. So that uh, just as there's some kind of unexplained variations in the overall scores when you look at the picture, generally for the whole grade level, when you start breaking it down into quarters of achievement, there's also a kind of a confusing picture there. In mathematics, there's a dramatic decline in the number in the top quartile. But yet the others are more consistent. And the number in the third quartile goes from 21 to 32. Again, when you, the, the one common parallel is that when you get into the science, social studies, and humanities again, again everything tends to leave them out a lot more. Um, my job tonight is to present, not to interpret. Uh, <laughs> or to take the scene. Not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. That's right. You're just the messenger. That's right. Were there was some questions when I said and moved them? Um, looking at the test scores are fine, but the question I have is what are we going to do if there is a problem as far as the writing at, at this particular in this particular grade? 
what are we going to do to help these children? Yeah, are there I'll... plans for... Who <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> just a message. Me to ask? Uh, <laughs> okay, the plans are over the summer for Dr. Dore and myself to do a thorough analysis of this and from the, uh, from the results and general observations, having talked with the administrative team, Barbara and Chris Toy, uh, I would hope that we would be able to come up with some possible reasons as to why scores are as they are and propose some solutions to help address those needs that we hopefully will be able to identify. I think what we ought to be saying to the superintendent is that we're very concerned as we are, we're pleased with other scores. We're very concerned about these. We don't know what they mean. Well, I think as we go on with this report, we'll see some hints of what's wrong. I think when you get to the subgroup report, there's some good hints. When we get to page 13, I, I guess we're going to get there. Why don't you tell us? Let's get to it. What, what page would you say to the Just before we get to page 13, I would like to show you basically what the um, subtests, the very specific subtests, look like in terms of achievement levels. You can see, looking down that column around the 300 area, that uh, there are not a lot of significant highs and lows in that subtest kind of analysis. So that is one area I think that is not going to uh, offer us a lot of insights as to why the scores come out as they do. And with that, I will go to the page that Loretta was talking about. You've heard, I'm sure, and read in the papers, on t seen on TV, the, uh, a lot of talk about the gender gap. And this year, in the fourth grade, we certainly have a distinct gender gap, one that's very significant. Only instead of the girls scoring lower, in math and science, the girls do better pretty much across the board. You can see that we have in that class 54% males, 46% females, and we have some good potential in math and science as far as the young ladies are concerned. Um, you can see the differentiation there. The, uh, in reading, the boys scored 297 compared to 386 for the girls. In the writing area, the boys scored 234 and the girls 364 for a difference of 130 points. In math, again, the boys scored at 289, the girls scored at 355. In science, the boys scored at 312, the girls at 335. Social studies, 315 and 328. And then the humanities areas, the boys scored better by four points, which is essentially the same score. Are you going to show page 14? 13. <laughs> not 13, 14. Oh, I'm sorry. I do not have a, have a overhead for 13. Okay. There's a couple of things that, that, I, that clue okay, me in. Sure. Yeah. Okay. When, on page 14, when it asks under mathematics the use of hands on material, 48% of the children said they never used them or they used them maybe a few times a year, which is, I, I think we're addressing that with our, our math coordinator that's coming in. So I think that may be a step in the right direction. Um, the Excuse thing, me, I don't, I don't all right, the, the very first thing it yeah. says, they never use hands-on material. The kids, by their own choosing, say, we never use any hands-on material. We don't use manipulatives. We don't, we don't do oh, enough of this. Oh, but statewide, the problem is even worse. That's true. 
But it, we, 50 percent of our children shouldn't be saying that. And we're trying to address that through the math program. And I think this emphasizes how, how much it's needed. Another thing that bothers me is the last question on that page, which says, how do you feel about music? And 76 percent of the children say, it is my least favorite subject. I do not like music. I, I, that makes me really sad because that's, that's what they chose to write. Uh, nationally, 60, or statewide, 60 percent of the kids say, it's my favorite, it's one of my favorite subjects. We say, I don't like music, and I don't know who we tell that to, but I'd like it to be, when we make our goals for the summer, I'd like for that to be addressed. I don't think that 75 percent of our children should be saying, music is my least favorite time of the day, I do not like music. And so I, I don't know if we ever use this, these questionnaire items, but I think they tell an awful lot about how kids feel about school. They say, we love art. 60% say, it's my favorite. It's one of my favorites. And 75% say, I don't like music. So I think we need to do something so that they like music. Because they got a chance here to say how they feel, and I think we should do something about it. So I, don't want, I just want this to be said so that when we start making goals that we somehow address the fact that the children in the fourth grade told us 75% of them said, I don't want to go to music. Well, I agree with you. Uh, beyond that, with respect to reading and writing and these other issues which you raised uh, earlier, uh, I understand, Superintendent, that you're going to get back to us uh, with a fuller explanation once you've had some time and uh, Lyle and others to to review this. Well, as you can see, we've, uh, we've already spent uh, several hours. However, the entire team will spend some time this summer. And I have uh, found uh, resources in the budget uh, awaiting the recommendations that come out of our administrative council as to how to use those resources. And I've discussed uh, some already that uh, some things we might do that I think are a little different and quite exciting. But I want to wait till we've had a good go around on this. But, but, but the things that we might do uh, is interesting, but gee whiz, we've been, we've been doing some very interesting things. Now let's look at uh, writing for a moment. Uh, we're way down in writing compared to other school districts around the state. There's 66 other school systems in the state of Maine that uh, where the testing in fourth grade was higher than Cape Elizabeth, which I, I don't want to make light of everything, but you've got to inject some humor into these serious problems. I guess that proves that money isn't everything, doesn't it? Uh, that uh, money isn't the full solution to every educational program because I'm sure we spend more on it than other school systems. So we rank 66, and we have, we spent a lot of time here talking about writing when I first came on the school board. And we teachers went to Bay Writing Course and so forth. And so we emphasized writing. We absolutely emphasized writing in the elementary school. I'm not saying that that doesn't work, but I'm saying don't give us another program on top of a program. Why is it? that a school system, and there may be probably very good reasons for this that don't reflect, that don't show a serious problem. But I think the question has to be answered. Why is it that a school system that has emphasized writing and prides itself on its elementary school writing program finishes 66th in the state? I, that's the question I want to answer. Then I, I would ask, see, our writing scores here today for other grade levels have been significantly high. And then I would ask, you know, why now, at this point in time, uh, isn't that writing resource affecting this grade? Yeah. So, you know, those are very excellent questions, and those are the things we're going to wrestle with. And we're going to come up, hopefully, with some answers or some things we want to try that will help this group of kids. Can I say something positive? Sure. It said 84% of the children said that they read on their own every day, that they choose to read a free choice something every day. I think that's good. Did you have more, Lyle? No, that's fine. 
I, I would like to reiterate what already has been said, that I certainly hope and I know that the administration and the resources that we have in our school department and outside of our school department will be used to fix the problem that exists here. I think that we really need to address the education of these children that are in this grade, some of whom have been in the school system for six years already by the time they're in fourth grade, perhaps some who have moved in in the interim, I'm sure some have not been with us since uh, their pre-K or K or whatever days. But I really think there's a significant um, situation here that we can affect some really important positive changes in the lives of these children, these hundred children who are in this grade, uh, some of whom need some resources other than what they have so far had. And, and I know you will find them and bring them to bear on the education of, of this particular group of students. And I will be looking forward as a, as a viewer to see what the solutions will be. Thank you. Thank you, Lyle. Okay, thank you. Madam Chairman. Yes. Guys, yes. Before we go into the agenda, mm -hmm. uh, three to four minute break since we're without water tonight that we can, and maybe they could turn off the mics as they do for other counselors. Thank you. We will recess for uh, less than five minutes, and uh, we'll say five minutes, and five minutes we'll return. Thank you. Good idea. Additions? I, I have one, uh, actually two small corrections on the bottom of the first page, page 51. Um, the board was extremely pleased to hear of this achievement, is, is the sentence, the way the sentence should read. And uh, the second one, just a typo on page 51C, um, correction of the word proposed when Mr. Pacious moved to tentatively approve the proposed certification plan. Other than that, uh, I think they're correct. Anybody else have any other corrections? Minutes accepted as circulated. The next item, the business manager's report, D. Thank you. Page 58 in your agendas. You have uh, general program revenues and special program revenues. To date, as of uh, May 31st, we have received 99% of the state funding, or $1.697 million. Anticipated year to date will be, we should have received uh, $1,574,000. The differential being that the teacher block grants of 138,377 received to date was not anticipated or not budgeted at the time. Under local revenues, we have received 92%, which is on target, or $4.5 million. Under miscellaneous revenues or other revenues, we have received 96%, I'm sorry, 227% or 333,000. Mm. The discrepancy being that the balance anticipated of 112,000, the actual being $282,000. Therefore, projected for the year, based on the general program revenues, we anticipate $313,000 of surplus revenues. Any questions on the general program? It's two categories, mainly your teacher certification, uh, the teacher block grant, and the balance that was projected mm -hmm. too low. Mm -hmm. we, we all had a chance to discuss this when we were working through the budget, so probably there won't be too many questions. Under the special programs, revenues, today we received 275% or 170000 based on an estimated 61000 That's explained on the next uh, following pages. Page 59 is your general program expenditures. 
date, we have expended 87% of the budget, or $5.896 million. The elementary budget, uh, 83%, the middle school budget of 85%, the high school at 89 and the undistributed or district-wide of 90%. Can we hold there? Pardon? May I ask a question there? Sure. Uh, on the elementary, one more time, I would yeah. like to make a point of that the operations and maintenance is only at 49%, and uh, one more time, I don't understand it. Uh, we struggle so hard to put money in for operations and maintenance and not cut it, and then it, does, it looks like it's not used. The, there are some outstanding bills that are being presently being paid you know the month of June since June is the year end uh, however there are some decent balances in the fuel accounts and stuff so but the July report will reflect a summary or a recap of the projects that were budgeted for and what was actually expended sure. so D, D, off the top of your head can you think of any major projects that were budgeted for Pond Cove that were not done during the year? Because it, there is a big difference of 49 percent expended in Pond Cove, 70 per, 76 percent at the middle school, and 77 percent at the high school. So I, I agree with Priscilla. We work at building maintenance, and then it's discouraging if, it's, if it hasn't been done. And possibly another reason, too, is uh, as far as I know, the projects have been completed. As far as them being paid to date, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And another possibility is, is when the, the bills were probably paid, some of them that belong to Pond Cove were probably paid out of the middle school account, which has to be checked into. They were coded mm -hmm. wrong or something. I mean, that's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. Thank but you. I will give you an updated report, and I'll mail it for Silica. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> On page 60, you see the federal and state uh, revenues and expenditures for year to date. We anticipate 172,000. We've received 170,000, and to date we have expended 143,000 dollars. Most of these accounts, except for all local entitlements and follow the child, will be expended come June 30th. As far as enrollments for Ju uh, for the first of June, 88. And comparing to last year's figure, the high school is has a decrease of five students. The middle school has an increase of 16 students. The elementary, Bon Cove Lent, has an increase of 35 students. Mm. Therefore, for the year, we have an increase of 46 students compared to last year, with the blunt of it being at the Bon Cove Lent School. The next two pages has to do with the food service program. During the month of May, we had revenues of $31,350, expenditures of $28,561, or a net income for the month for $2,789. For the year, we have cash, or a net income of $6,114. We have receivables from the state of Maine of $2,600. So we had projected back in, I believe, January or February, that we'd probably end the year with eight thousand uh, dollars with school lunch being completed we should have those figures in the next week or so last but not least is community services where they have revenues collected to date of three hundred twelve thousand dollars with expenditures of two hundred fifty nine thousand or a surplus of fifty three thousand Any questions on any of these points? Anybody have questions on business manager's report? Thank you, Dee. Uh, next item on the agenda is the election of the superintendent uh, for a three-year contract commencing July 1st, 1988 until June 30th, 1991. And I need a motion on that. Second. Any discussion? We like you. 
<laughs> we want you to stay. We actually, we all look forward. It's been a very uh, meaningful, significant changes that have taken place in two years' time, and I think in three years, uh, the next three years, we'll see a lot of really important, beneficial change in the education of students in this community. And I, on behalf of the board, thank you for your very hard work and dedication toward that end. We, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. I've enjoyed my two years, and I'm certain there's still much to do. Those in favor? Five to nothing. I, I, yeah, I think it's worth observing that you, you two are leaving, uh, you and Priscilla are leaving the school board tonight. That was one of the, the more important decisions you made in the last uh, uh, six years to, uh, to hire the superintendent. And uh, I was just thinking of all the things that you did, significant things, and uh, career ladder and a bunch of them. Daryl and the career ladder go together. It also was one of our more fun committees. That <laughs> yeah. It, that's that's it true. Was. Uh, we enjoy it very much. It's true. And, well, anyway, it's very nice, uh, uh, Daryl, to have you here. We made a very good choice, and I know that the fact that you disagree with me from time to time is just for effect. You just want to make it appear as though we disagree. Okay, the next item on the agenda, the vote on the AIDS and the library assistance contract. Uh, D, our business manager, Jan Solon and myself and our lawyer, Nick Nadzo, uh, worked on negotiating this contract. I think we came up with what is a, a good contract for the school department and a good contract for the AIDS and um, assistance. Uh, I need a motion on the acceptance of this contract. How, how many... Uh how many members of this bargaining unit are there? Four, six, eight, ten, Thank you, Jan. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Five to nothing. Next item: the consideration of the superintendent's nomination for, of a high school principal. In line with uh, it's uh, the kind of people we bring to the unit is. It makes all the difference. I'm very happy to announce that uh, I have a nomination for our high school principal. Uh, you have his veto in front of you. Uh, as you know, we had over 100 inquiries and probably seven full -time 70 full-time applications. These were narrowed down to nine. Uh, the board, the entire board, along with the screening committee, worked diligently for approximately six weeks. I'm very pleased to recommend Frank Miles, Jr. from Concord, New Hampshire for the principalship of the high school. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I need a motion on that. I move mm -hmm. that we accept Frank Miles, Jr. as the high school principal. Second? Second. Still a second. Is there discussion? Just that I'm very excited that I again had this type of opportunity look at and to serve on, and uh, I'm very excited that Frank is coming. Madam Chairman, I should, just so the board would know, that he met with the parent forum at coffee at 11 o'clock today and joined the staff for oh. their annual mm -hmm. party. So, and I met his wife this evening, and they're both very enthusiastic about coming. Wonderful. I think all of us are really excited about the uh, opportunity to work with Mr. Miles. He was a wonderful applicant. We had many wonderful applicants, actually. And I think uh, the parents of this community, the students, the staff, the administrators, other administrative team will very much benefit from uh, his service with us. So with that, uh, if there's no more discussion, those in favor? Five to nothing. Uh, the next item on the agenda, consideration of the superintendent's nomination of a middle school principal. I 
I'm equally excited, and uh, we had uh, almost an equal amount, and uh, we're down to five or six finalists. And uh, we do have a very strong candidate, and I would like to nominate Christopher M. Toy, who's been in the school on several occasions, and they're here all day again today, and is here in the audience this evening, on my left, in the second row. I nominate I recommend the nomination for Christopher Troy. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Jan Seck, is there a discussion? Again, I feel very privileged that I served on this committee, and uh, I'm certainly excited about Mr. Troy coming to work. I second that as well. I think uh, we all were very impressed with your credentials, with your philosophy, with your personality. Uh, I think that everybody's very much looking forward to working with you, and um, I think it will be a very exciting um, time for the middle school. Jan? I want to say as well that, that not only separately I think we're going to have um, terrific leadership, but, but as mm -hmm. a team, um, and, and overall K through 12 um, program, it's really going mm -hmm. to be dynamic. Good, good point. I think it's it's really important. Uh, those in favor? Five to nothing. Can, how do we uh, publicize uh, our new principles? Uh, maybe you're the expert on this. But it seems to me that it would be very good if we got out to the community either in your newspaper or some other means where we send things to parents school children or, to, or, or the citizens at large, just a condensed version of the resumes of both of these people so that the citizens will know a little bit about the people who are coming in here to run the middle school and the high school. Can that, we do that? That we, was uh, done in the last issue of the Cape Cod. Apparently, I did not <laughs> receive a complimentary Issue. Everybody receives an issue. All Perhaps three, you haven't had a chance to All three it. papers <laughs> yeah. publicized it. We, we wrote articles. With well, wasn't the, the Boston Globe? I read the Boston Globe. <laughs> New York Times, Boston Globe. <laughs> our three locals. Also, in our fall newsletter to the parents, mm -hmm. we'll highlight all of our new people and we use their veto. Oh, you do? We, everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we have pictures of them. So we'll, we'll uh, send some yeah, but They both have yeah. impressive backgrounds, and I Very. think it would be mm -hmm. interesting to people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Toy, as we know, uh, as Darrell mentions in the audience, welcome to you. Glad to have you on board. The next item on the agenda, consideration of the superintendent's nomination of an art teacher at the high school for the 1988-89 <laughs> school year. In line with uh, high-powered credentials, I'm sure you'll be as pleased as I am, find a Wellesleyan graduate of Tufts University School of Music and Fine Arts in Boston, Master of Arts in Teaching, a person with uh, admirable experience. We're very pleased. Uh, this candidate was selected from quite a number of art candidates, and I'm very pleased to recommend Laura Gibbing. Need a motion. She's the daughter of uh, my Friends, Phyllis and Bernie Gibbets. Must be. I don't know. Yeah, that's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, I will vote for her. <laughs> Good thing. Good thing. Indeed she is. Indeed she is. We, we do not have a third Would you like the honor of making the motion about said illustrious person? I certainly would like that on it so I can rush right home and call Bernie on the phone and say, Bernie, I got your daughter a job. <laughs> yes, I would like to move that uh, we hire Laura Giverts Gibbings. Second. Second. Jan seconds. Is there further discussion? Those in favor? Five to nothing. Moving along, consideration of superintendent's nomination of a speech therapist at Pond Cove for the 1988-89 school year. Again, we're very fortunate, a very high power, Jenna M. LaBelle uh, of Westbrook, Maine. Uh, you'll note that uh, she comes highly qualified, very bright student, 
and I'm sure will make a great addition to our staff. Boston University and University of Vermont. Need a motion? Loretta and Priscilla seconded. Is there, didn't you? I thought you said yes, and then you raised your hand seconded. Is there a correction on that? Okay, leave it as is. Is there a discussion about that? Those in favor? Five to nothing. Consideration of the superintendent's nomination to community services of an advisory board member. The recommendation from the, the uh, community school people, John J. Fabish, project manager, 26 <coughs> Paul Pine Road. You need a motion on that? I move that John Fabish goes on to the community service advisory board. Second. Loretta seconded that. Is there a discussion? Loretta and I had the pleasure of serving with John on the um, review team of the community, our community service program. And he certainly is an enthusiastic user of community services. And I think he'll add a wonderful dynamic to the board. Uh, thank you. Is there further comment, discussion? Those in favor? Five to nothing. The next item on the agenda, the approval of the 1988-89 school calendar, the workshop dates in place. Uh, we finally have uh, worked out two calendars that serve our purposes and our needs. They're both 176 pupil days, four teacher days, and a total of 180 days. We're allowing for five storm days. Uh, what we would like, if the board passes this this evening, uh, we will mail these calendars to K-8 students, their homes, and the high school. Now, the high school, as you will note, wanted four teacher days solely, no shortened days, because they felt that it wasn't in the best interest of the older students. Uh, so I'm presenting these, I'm recommending these as the official school calendar which would hopefully be mailed the first week in July to each home and published, of course, in the paper and everywhere we can place it. Is there a discussion about the school calendar, Loretta? Daryl, can you tell me why the, the pupil attendance days have dropped from 180 days to 176 days? They haven't. It, we've always had 176 days or 175, which is the minimum. We listed 180 days, and then if we didn't have the snow days, we would come to the board and close school on the 176th day. We've always had 176 days. That, that's not the way it's been presented in the past. It's been presented as 180 days with five storm days. Now we have 176 days with five storm days. And last year we had 176 days and five storm days. We go 176. Regard then we count we count backwards. But in the past, you're right. We presented 180. We said 180 student days mm -hmm. and five storm days, but always close school yeah, on 176. Mm -hmm. Now three years ago, we came to the board and said 176 day is Tuesday. The board said, fine, we closed schools. Last year, we closed schools on 176. And this year, it's 176 as well. We've counted that a dozen times. Now, prior to that, I don't know how they presented it or what they had. We have Rick in the... But I can find no record where the students went 180 days <coughs> It's always been 175 to 176. In one year, unfortunately, the kindergarten were less than 175. Further comment? Are you ready to vote on the school calendar as has been presented? 
I have one question. Have the have the teachers, for example, at the middle school, are you are sure that they want this number of workshop days? Yes, I've asked. I've asked Steve. Now I'm not sure that a number of them. I don't think if you took a vote, it would be 100 percent. I've met with those people twice. But uh, I met with uh, the teacher representatives who are extremely well represented last Thursday night uh, for other reasons. And this came up again. And uh, they felt that grade level meetings and their department meetings, they could benefit a great deal from us, the people that were there from the middle school. I, I would like to comment. I, I think there are an awful lot of workshop days. Uh, at the same time, I think that with our new uh, halftime curriculum coordinator, with the new principals <coughs> that we have coming on board, that I'm, I really expect and I'm sure that these workshop days can be put to excellent productive use in terms of upgrading and improving the curriculum that we have to offer. And uh, I think it's if we use our time very, very well, and I expect we will, I think it will be a real benefit to the education of students. Is there a further comment about the school calendars? Then I need a motion to approve the calendars as proposed by the superintendent. I move that we accept the calendar as proposed by the superintendent. Is there a second? Still a seconds. Further discussion? Those in favor? Five to nothing. And the next item on the agenda, the approval of the funded grants for 1988-89. Uh, these are grants that need board approval. Uh, the number one is the 10,542 Chapter 2 allocation. Uh, and the number two, I, if I may, Madam Chairman, take a vote together is a creative a computer grant written by Warren Wilkinson, Elizabeth Barton, and Ted DeMille uh, for uh, $3,995 called Creative Computers. And a lot of people are very excited about this. What is that uh, allocation for? A uh, project they wrote of Marty Watts. No, 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 not the uh, grant. Uh, chapter 2. Chapter 2. What's that? Quick. What? This is Chapter 2 money, and we apply this to equipment. You know, like uh, buying film, I mean, projectors, overheads, that kind of thing. Right. Last year... $6.79 a student. Right. Not much, is it? Not very much. It's gone down considerably. Could you comment very briefly on what the creative use of computers in the elementary school project grant is all about? I mean, it seems funny to me since we decided in our budget process that K through 3 was not the, the priority uh, place to put computers. It seems funny that we're investigating creative use of computers in elementary school. Not that I'm totally opposed to it, but I'm wondering what it's all about. Uh, all I can tell you is that these are incentive grants that the teachers apply for through the state. And they're judged by a judge team. Mm -hmm. the, people. the principal, I mean, the, the teacher, Warren Wilkinson, and the two others are kind of enthusiastic about computers. And with Marty Watts, they wrote out something called Creative Computers. 890771, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have the grant in front of me. Barbara, can you tell us a little something about these, what they're doing? Marty Watts was very enthusiastic. I, I read it a long time ago, Daryl. And frankly, um, when Ren approached me about writing this particular grant, um, I directed him to Don Curry, who sort of helped us pull all that together. And, and when Don called the state, they were kind of um, discouraging in the use of the notion to get an innovative grant for more computer use, that that's something that they funded and funded and it wasn't likely to be considered innovative. Ren did a spectacular job of describing a program which I would be happy to 
either address myself in another month or have him come. It does in involve the use of uh, state-of-the-art equipment, whereas the screen no longer is just one that's used by two children, but rather projects for the entire classroom mm -hmm. to be able to use. And, mm -hmm. and my basic understanding of it at this point is the notion of bringing state-of-the-art equipment in and his various applications is what I need to come back mm -hmm. to do with. I wasn't looking in yeah. great detail, just well, some I'm vague idea. I guess a long time I was wanting to be sure that we weren't taking six students from our yeah. elementary and doing a bang-up job of computers yeah, with them, but it's for all the students. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we need a motion for the approval of the funded grants for 1988-89. I move that we approve the funded grants for 1988-1989. Mm -hmm. We're out of seconds. Further discussion? Those in favor? Five to nothing. Uh, the next item, approval of the proposal contract to provide an energy audit technical assistance report of the high school, the middle school, Pond Cove, and Lund schools. All right. Dean, um, would you like to make this presentation? Sure. In your package, you have a proposal, two proposals from Kaczynski Associates. Proposal A, dealing with the technical assistance report. And what this would do is the report would generate uh, the report generated by this review is designed to give administrators a detailed description of current energy use patterns as well as suggestions for energy conservation. The cost of this report is uh, 15 cents per square foot. At the time, uh, Kaczynski Associates had proposed us 18 cents. We did some negotiation and finally settled on 15 cents. We talked to the State Department. The the proposal or the uh, TAR report, as it's called, should be or will be accepted by the end of June. The state still has not approved this. However, uh, if it is approved, Kaczynski, is, this was put out to bid last fall, by the way. They would do a report analyzing the, uh, you know, the energy systems or the buildings in the district. The cost of this report is forty thousand plus. The state would pay twenty thousand, half of it, and the school would pay twenty thousand. From this report, what would be generated is other projects such as the energy management system that we've talked about through the budget process. Uh, there's a list sent by the state department as to windows insulation. Anything that qualifies with a uh, two to ten year payback could qualify for this type of grant under the uh, Title uh, 11. So basically, I have two proposals in front of you. One is accepting Kaczynski Associates to do the TAR report for $40,000 plus. Dollars. And from that report, we hope to generate other projects that the state would pay at least 50% off and the school 50%. Dave, why are we doing these why? tandem like this? Why are we not going with the first and seeing what the first generates as far as, uh, well, here are some areas you could have savings in, and then coming back to report B after that? I guess what he's coming, where he's coming from is the work that will be done on the, on the TA report, a lot of that will be useful for the other report. So if he does the TA over the whole district, a lot of this information will lead to other projects. So he's trying to tie in the two contracts into one. The two separate contracts, don't get me wrong. But the TA has to be done first, and he needs about six months to do the work. After that, reports will be generated, let's say within the fourth or fifth one to the state, and the first thing we're probably going to uh, target on is the energy management system. And at that point, you would go out, or the district would go out to bid and solicit bids as to who has the best system for the best price out there. But then, the, could we not, if he generates that report, let's say it's Y report and it's going to be <coughs> insulating 10 ceilings for 50000 then we have a bid, the lowest one. We can come back to the board with that report and say, do we want to do it? Mm. Or we want your permission to do it, or yeah. we don't want to do it. So we're not committing that second report, are we? No. The board is only committing right now 
correct. Twenty from the state to do the TA, whatever that is. And it would take a hard look at the entire thing. I would hope that when we, if we do it, we would only do those things that have a payback of two to five years, you know, cert for certain. So then, you, therefore, you're asking us to vote on Report A only, <coughs> not on Report B contract. I would prefer if you would accept both, but it's up to you, Pete. But like Daryl says, if you if you accept Proposal B, we're really not tying anything until the board approves us to go into this that second stage. If they come back and they say that uh, we need an energy management system, this will be up to you people that we go out and solicit bids and do whatever we have to to install that uh, system and decide what the payback is going to be on the years. And also, and I suspect, Priscilla, that when they, if they do B, they're doing B. In other words, if they do B and do three projects, this firm will have done the work for the projects. And if we do it, then they would get 50% and the state pays 50%. We would pay 50%. Are you with me? In other words, if, if they do all the late work, and then another firm came in and took their material, and wrote the project, it wouldn't be worthwhile for them. I think all they're asking here, and correct me, Dean, if I'm wrong, they want to do A, and they want to take the parts of A to do B. And we won't do B until we recommend it to you and say it's worthwhile, and you agree. Is that not correct? That's right. The data found in A will be to supplement B. Constitutes B. So as they do the work, I suspect they'll be doing the B projects at the same time. They would go to the state, if they're approved, then they would have board approval and bidding. They're, so they're only committed, as I see it, you're only committed to A, yeah. but you're allowing them to write the proposals that'll be in B. But why would you go to A and then say, Fine, look at all the work that can be done here, and, I'll, and then make a proposal at that point to say that they will do B. Can you can, I don't know. Can you ask uh, the B? Can you ask the There'd be a problem with that? Sure. Mrs. Kaczynski is with us. I'm sorry, my husband's going to be here tonight. I'm Kathy Kaczynski. I'm part of Kaczynski Associates, too. Um, if I can tr maybe try to clarify this, the reason that the two projects are put together at the 15 cent per square foot rate is that when Jack goes in and gathers data for part A, he can also gather data for part B. And that way he can hold your costs down in that phase of it. And another reason for putting the things together is that it would allow you um, to get your money back a year earlier than if he did the two projects separately. So that if something comes through and it's recommended for uh, this phase, then your money would come through as a result of that phase. This phase ends somewhere around November or December. The money is not approved, or the projects are not approved until the following April or May. Then you get the go-ahead to, to implement them. If you separated these, you would then have to wait until, let's see, we're talking about April, April, May of 89, you would then have to wait until April, May of 90. The likelihood of your projects increasing in price is uh, part of the, the structure. If I've answered your questions, mm -hmm. I, um, mm -hmm. Thank you know, you. If, if you could, you know, uh, rephrase or I'll try. <laughs> Mm -hmm. is it, is it, are there further questions or comments? Well, I guess that it's assumed that whatever is found in A that you go ahead and you put in for grant money, which we're going to pay the other half of, but we really haven't had a chance to say we don't want to do that project, but you've already put in for it and we're already getting state money. Well, state money. well basically, you will, rev you will review the report before it goes in, so you will know exactly what's sent to the state. And the projects that are delineated are going to be ones that make sense for the physical plan of the school. 
Okay, then I still don't understand why the, it has to be tied in the <coughs> Because then we can hold the price. And also, you will get your money. In other words, your projects would be put in for um, April of 89. You would get approval in 89 rather than, if, I mean, for instance, if you identify good projects, and they go through in this, uh, this current cycle, which goes into the state and the federal government in November, then those projects which are approved and which you elect to go ahead with can then be uh, approved in April of 89, rather than waiting for this to be done again and it would have to go into the next cycle. So you could, if I may, if, for example, you did three B projects, and it went in, and mm -hmm. two of them were approved. Mm -hmm. And the board came to the board and said, there are two that approved. The board could still say, we'd want to do it. That's right. It probably would not be to your advantage to say, not do them. But, because but the board could. Right. And the reason that the projects would not be funded would not be because they weren't good projects. It would be because the pool of money from which these projects are funded would, would not be adequate to fund all those approvable projects that are submitted in that cycle. See, Cape Elizabeth isn't the only um, institution that would be going in for funding. Priscilla, what do you see as the disadvantage of approving them together? I guess <coughs> I, I'm totally confused on the issue. I find your you're still committing yourselves to something that, I mean, I don't understand why the timing is such that if you're still going to have approval on it, why you can't have approval on it again at... You can have approval on it, but you would have to wait to the next year. And then there may be a little bit of risk in not getting funding. Again, because there, there may be, um, um, you know, not enough money in the pool. And something else I might mention, if you present four projects, let's say, and one project has a nine and a half year payback, and that, because of the, the money in the pool not being great enough, they're not funding the projects that have that long a payback. You can then hold on to that project because you've had all the data gathered, and it's, a, it's an approvable project if there's enough money. You can submit it the next year. So if you have your projects in, online, three of them are approved, you'd like to do the fourth one, but it doesn't get funded, then you just put it in the following year and it perhaps will get funded then. It's basically to your advantage to do this, this way. And Jack's been doing this for eight years now. And he's, I think we figured out he's gotten over somewhere between four hundred and fifty and five hundred thousand dollars in, you know, in matching funds for various institutions. And he's worked primarily with small um, institutions. Mm -hmm. Let me ask another question. Priscilla, this way down. If we pass both, if the board passes both this evening, the only commitment money-wise is $20,000, isn't it? I think so, yes. Yes, because that's, because the, that's what the price of the, uh, yeah, it. right. So right. the commitment is 20000 any way you cut it. So there's no chance that the state won't match the funds, the other twenty. I will say that there's only one chance, and that is if we do not come up with one fundable project. And that is very... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were here. Came through. Okay. Let me go over. You have $20,000 from the state. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've heard enough discussion on this issue, and I'd like to move ahead to a vote on it one way or another, and so uh, I would uh, move to approve this project. Second. Uh, Harold moved. Jan seconded. Is there further discussion? Those in favor of the approval of the project as presented, which is Project uh, Kaczynski Associates Proposal A and B. Those in favor? Five to nothing. Thank you. Under other business, is there a board member who has other business to be discussed at this point? Um, Daryl, there's one uh, 
a loose end that i would just like to inquire about at this time i know that we had mentioned and i had a request to follow up on the nautilus the resolution of the nautilus situation and just wondering if we ever have the proper letters that we were promised to have been sent and so on what's the status of that we followed it up with community services and it was being uh, their attorney was writing it up and if the community services has it i don't know anything about it to my knowledge we, i have not received mm -hmm. what was supposed to be sent to us and uh, Th that was months know. ago, though, and <coughs> they're saying that until, from that time until this, I think that's something that is, really should be expedited. And I'm certain that she would have sent it to me if she had. So then, let's uh -huh. get that in the minutes, so I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, please, do. Uh, I think that was back in December when we had that workshop with them. I think that we, in, in our relationship with the school department, with the Nautilus organization, have really held up our end of the bargain, and, and I truly feel that the Nautilus organization should do what they said they would do uh, in order to continue to enjoy the fine facility that they do enjoy. So uh, we'll assume that that will be followed up and uh, I'd like to send resolution I'd like to send come. I'd copy of this page of the minutes that says exactly that. Thank you. Now, the, the next thing uh, is, I think at this point, we should set the next meeting of the school board. The, uh, there's an organizational meeting on July 1st, 12 o'clock, here in the council chambers with the council. Mm -hmm. The program looks like this. The council will, first, the new board members will be sworn in. Secondly, the council will have its organizational meeting. The board would have its organizational meeting. And then 40 some people would go downstairs for lunch and adjourn. Now, that, that, that's all the business that'll happen. Now, the next regular board of ed meeting mm -hmm. is to be determined by you people. That was determined mm -hmm. by the charter, by the mm -hmm. by law. Well, according to schedule, then the next official, I guess, the next working meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board will then be on July 12th, the Tuesday. So we'll set uh, the next working meeting of the Cape Elizabeth. I understand that there is an organizational meeting that has been called for July 1st. And then we will set another date for July 12th for the Cape Elizabeth School Board to convene at 7.30. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you. Now, the last item on the agenda is a consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. Need a motion for that? Greta? Second? <laughs> we need a second, Jan. Those in favor? Five to nothing. Thank you. We'll reconvene after this executive session to adjourn the meeting. Also, <laughs> Chairperson, the warrant is running around. Let's see, it's $7,000 to the Wyndham School Department. Wyndham School Department, $7,000. Special ed tuition? Special program. They did? To, to Wyndham? Well, we plan a special program. Why you get it? we